Let's now go to our 24 News correspondent and co-host of Crossroads, Tal Heinrich, who joins us from New York. Tal, thank you. Uh, Trump used this visit to defend his decision to leave Syria, again saying that ISIS has been knocked out. So tell us, what are the reactions uh, we're hearing around this trip? Well, Sarah, when Trump went to Iraq, he went there to fend off two types of criticism. First, recently he was accused here domestically of not going to a combat zone yet, like previous presidents before him have done. It's a presidential tradition, especially around Christmas. And Trump, by going to Iraq, he checked this box. And the second thing, as he was there in Iraq talking to soldiers, he also fended off the criticism um, on his latest decision of withdrawing the troops from uh, Syria. He said that if the United States will have to launch an operation uh, in Syria and act there once again, they can do it from its neighboring country, from Iraq, and that U.S. presence in Iraq is going to stay. We're talking about uh, 5,200 soldiers there. Um, Trump was also talking to the soldiers, as you saw in uh, the piece before. He signed some Make America Great Again hats, for example. And over here, domestically, he's been accused of actually campaigning in uh, Iraq. Some of his critics say that uh, he didn't act in a very, uh, I would say, presidential way like previous presidents have done while going there. But we know that Trump, he doesn't really play by the rules, rules that other presidents uh, have followed. And uh, Trump is, of course, facing backlash for this visit to troops. Uh, while he was there, some 40,000 troops were home working without pay due to the government shutdown, along with hundreds of thousands of other federal employees. And as Congress returns today, the shutdown continues. So tell us, what can we expect here? Well, right now, Sarah, we have no clue how long this government shutdown will last. But keep in mind that January 3rd, the Democrats, they take over the House of Representatives, so things might change. Right now, they're still trying to reach a compromise between the White House and the Democrats. But the president has been very clear. Also, he talked about the border wall and the government shutdown as he was visiting in Iraq. And he reiterated his statements that he's not going to sign the spending bill unless there is uh, enough funding for the wall uh, included. And enough funding means the $5 billion that he wants, that he needs to build the border wall. Now, we don't know if there is a compromise, if there will be a compromise, what kind of shape it will take. One thing is certain, you can agree or disagree with the president on the need to have a, a wall, but he comes across uh, in a more clear way, I would say, with what he wants to do on immigration than Democrats. They're a bit obscure with their solutions and what they're suggesting. Um, they're calling him a fear monger. Some of them, they don't believe there's a necessity in, in a border wall. Some of them just don't want to give the president to hand him this victory card of uh, fulfilling another campaign promise. And as we know, the wall was a key campaign promise of President Trump. Mm, certainly. And Tal, Iraqi officials are calling Trump's visit a blow to Iraq's sovereignty. And there are reports that they're also calling for a vote to expel U.S. troops in the wake of this visit. So tell us what could happen there. It's unlikely that the U.S. will pull out from Iraq. Again, 5,200 American soldiers are there right now, and they're also needed in case the U.S. will need to launch an operation in nearby Syria, especially after withdrawing the forces from there. Uh, it seems that Iraqi politicians are seizing on this opportunity of Trump's visit there, unexpected visit, surprise visit, to call for a U.S. exit from uh, the country. They, they're mainly angry because uh, the Trump Trump visit wasn't really 100% uh, coordinated with Iraqi authorities, but of course the United States will say that it's due to security concerns. Uh, President Trump, he didn't meet with the Iraqi Prime Minister while he was there. They could only announce his visit a couple of hours ahead of his uh, landing in, in this uh, American military base there. So the President was uh, on a different uh, part of the country. He did invite the Prime Minister to visit Washington, though, according to uh, reports and a phone call between them too. Um, one more thing to remember, by the way, in this respect, is that the U.S. came back to Iraq back in 2014 after withdrawing the forces uh, from Iraq in 2011 under President Obama. And the U.S. did so at the request of the Iraqi government, their invitation to help in the fight against ISIS. Tal Heinrich Sarah. in New York, thank you for breaking that down. Now,